we are going to discuss the second step in the flow of genetic information and that is transcription. It is basically the formation of RNA over the DNA template. In other words, it is copying of the genetic information and this is also children based on the complementarity of the DNA just like replication. However, the difference is that in replication the total DNA gets replicated whereas in transcription only one of the strands of the DNA is copied to form the RNA. Also, in the case of replication you have adenine pairing with thymine Whereas, in the case of transcription, you will have adenine pairing with uracil because we are forming RNA over the DNA template. Now, why should both strands of the DNA not be copied to form RNA? Now, children, the reasons are as follows. If both the strands were being copied, you would get two different RNAs with different sequences of the nucleotides and these two RNAs would code for different proteins. So in fact one segment of a DNA would be coding for two different proteins which would result in a lot of complication and chaos. So only one of the strands of the DNA will code for RNA and therefore for one protein. Another reason is that if two DNA molecule strands were coding for the two RNA strands, then children these two RNA strands would be complementary in nature and then they would result in formation of a double-stranded RNA. This would prevent the translation of RNA to protein. In fact, the process of transcription will stop. So therefore, transcription will involve only one strand of DNA to form RNA IDP. Now, we talk about a transcription unit. What is it? It is a segment of the template strand which takes part in transcription. A transcription unit, as you can see in the diagram, consists of three units or three regions, a promoter, the structural gene and a terminator. You can see the promoter and terminator on either side of the structural gene. Now let's talk about what is a structural gene? This contains encoded information for the synthesis of the chemical substances required for the cell machinery. The structural gene is in fact a component of the DNA strand as you can see and the two strands are there out of which one is called as the template strand. This is the strand which has the 3' prime to 5' prime polarity. As transcription can only occur in 5' prime to 3' prime direction. That is why this is called as the template or the master strand. The N forms the mRNA. The other strand which has 5' prime to 3' prime polarity, this is displaced during transcription and this is called as the coding strand. As the genetic code or the sequence of nucleotide in this strand is similar to the genetic code or the sequence which is going to be on the mRNA which will be formed except that the uracil will be replaced by thymine. Children, all reference points while defining transcription unit are made with respect to the coding strand. Now, if you were to look in the diagram, so children, in the diagram, you can easily see the template strand 
and the coding style. And also you can see the representation given in the flow chart here. Okay, in the sequence of the basis, you can also see how the 3 prime to 5 prime is a template and the coding strand is going to be 5 prime to 3 prime and the complementary nature you can see of the basis. Obviously, the mRNA which will be formed is going to have the same sequence as the coding strand, excepting that it will have uracil. Now, let's talk about the promoter region. You can see very well the promoter region. This lies at 5 prime N, which is called the upstream with respect to the polarity of the coding strand. It provides the recognition site as well as the binding site for RNA polymerase and transcription factors. It also defines the template and coding strands. Children, there may be a very specific area here that is AT rich area in the promoter region and this forms the Tata box, TATA box. And this was discovered by Prinbor, so it is also called as Prinbor box. Now we talk about the terminator region and this lies at the 3 prime end or the downstream of the coding strand and it helps to end transcription. It basically has poly A sequences or is palindromic. Beside this children, the eukaryotes may also require an enhancer. That site may also be required. Besides that, children, additional regulatory sequences may also be responsible for regulation of the gene expression. Now, let's talk about a gene. The term gene was coined by Johansson in 1909 and according to him, Gene is an elementary unit of inheritance that can be assigned to a particular character. In other words, it is also said to be a functional unit of inheritance. Besides that, children, Morgan's work on crossing over and recombination suggested that gene is a segment of chromosome which can be separated through crossing over and is therefore a unit of recombination. Besides that, we also know that a gene refers to a DNA sequence coding for a transfer RNA or a ribosomal RNA. Nowadays, the gene term has been replaced by cistron. So, what is a cistron? It is a segment of DNA coding for a polypeptide or performing a specific function. Now, children, the structural gene can be a monocystronic gene or it can be polycystronic. Now, monocystronic is in the case of eukaryote. That is, it codes for a single polypeptide. However, in the case of bacteria and prokaryotes, we have polycystronic, that is, it codes for a number of polypeptides. Another feature of eukaryotes is the split genes, that is, our genes basically consist of two different regions. We have the coding or the express sequences which is called as the exon. And we also have the introns which are the intervening sequences. These intervening sequences, they do not appear in mature or processed RNA. However, the inheritance...